three. The original recording date was 10-29-2014, and I am recording on November 2nd. Yeah, 2nd. Um, just a quick introduction, because we forgot to say the episode, the day I forgot to welcome somebody. I forgot to show you some acquisitions. I got really overwhelmed and excited. Not overwhelmed. I was really excited that Morgan was back, and we just started chatting. And So I wasn't as organized as I had hoped. It had been a long week. And we, it was a Wednesday night, I had class all day and clients all day, so we were just really trying to get something together when she could. So I'm just going to have this brief introduction and then we'll move right into the original broadcast of the show. Uh, I did want to welcome Ellen, Elaine Ella B. She introduced herself on the board and I somehow forgot to write that down in my notes, but she is from South Africa and she just got her first drop spindle two weeks ago. So. Welcome to the dark side. Just a big slippery slope. You can see behind me, <laughs> that is all fleece uh, this way, waiting to be stored from my sheep. Yikes, Batman. I know, so much. And I gave one away. I've given two away. I'm sure I can find a home for more. Uh, but back to Elaine Ellaby. She just finished her first alpaca knit and um, did happen to mention that even though living in South Africa is a subtropical climate, it does get cold. So I think there are a lot of merino sheep in South Africa. I feel like that's a thing there. It's like wine and merino sheep, South African yarns. But you can maybe fill us in on the boards and let me know if that is in fact correct. Um, I did forget to show you an acquisitions and discoveries, this beautiful Glenier string bag, which was the Highlands on the Fly. Um, signature bag and this is Serafina on Ravelry and Bling Your String. Lovely on the inside. Her details are great. There's Bling Your String. Just a really pretty kind of um, vine print and then always comes with a nice stitch marker or set of stitch markers so Thank you so much, Erin, for these lovely bags. It was very thoughtful for you, again, to do a themed fabric for the retreat. The other thing I received, which was quite special, was from Liberalina on Ravelry. She's a member of our group. It was this beautiful card, and I think I'm going to frame that. It's from Isabel, Highlands on the Fly. And Roy Thomas is an... A Nashebe born artist, which would be a native culture of Canada in Thunder Bay, Ontario. And this is his work as inspired by the pictographs and other artists of the woodland style. So thank you so much. We'll frame that up and we'll hang it up. So um, I think that's all I needed to add. I'm looking at my notes. Were those two things the episode, the date? and thanks Batman and again just to keep continue to continue to reiterate I am catching up on my um, PMs on Ravelry sometimes I spend so much time at the computer it's hard to come home but um, part of my day today is going to be doing that um, while I make pumpkin pie while it's snowing and I also have quite a bit of homework to do so I'm just going to kind of throw that all in together so it's one a one-time commitment to the to the computer. Other than that, I'm gonna segue right into Morgan and I and episode 23B of Fiber Track. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Fiber Track. Hello and welcome to Fiber Track. So excited to have Morgan back. <laughs> That's why we're, I'm, the recording is coming late because we wanted to work it around my school schedule and Morgan's ability to record. So it's Wednesday evening, right before Halloween. Mm -hmm. And so uh, hopefully we'll have this posted soon. So thank you for your patience waiting for this additional episode to come out. I did have the retreat last weekend, so really didn't have much time on the weekend to do it. So it actually worked out perfectly. Do you have anything you want to say? Glad to be back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excited. We have lots to talk about. Yeah, we have, I know. In some ways, um, uh, we were just going to kind of, I was going to just try to wing it, so we'll see how it goes. 
We have a few notes here and there, but hopefully we won't get too chatty. No, we can keep it under an hour. Yeah. Okay. So I do want to welcome new and returning viewers. If you're a new viewer, you will not have even noticed that Morgan has been absent <laughs> these long weeks, but she has, and she's back. <laughs> she has. <laughs> So, um, so thank you for tuning in. That's shield, that's me. Shield maiden in the back. No, no, that's shield that is maiden. Not I'm she barking. knits around. <laughs> <laughs> she knits around Swensty. Um, and thank you for your returning viewer for again the patience and sticking with us and continuing to support the podcast. It's very much appreciated. So thank you. I also wanted to throw out there um, a heartfelt thanks. Uh, for those of you who make connections via Instagram or Ravelry through PMs through whatever other venue aside from just watching the podcast so thank you so much for reaching out or engaging and I apologize if I'm a terrible at it I am probably the worst I, I, I think I am I only go to Ravelry she's the worst got a Catholic whisper going on I right know. I don't know if they can hear <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know, <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know, that is from Saint on the Fire, one of my favorite movies. And my grandmother also has a Catholic mother, so I make fun of it a lot. That by no means is a commentary on anybody who is Catholic. No, it's not. No. That's just it's from the movie. Yeah. Anyways. Watch the movie. Yeah, then, I'll either be too lazy to edit that out, <laughs> or you won't, you won't know anything about that. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add into the thank you? Oh yes. Um, should I wait until we're at some podcast to say? Yeah, thank I would. You? Yeah, yeah, because um, you're knitting on them. And I'll wait until Megafauna to yes, reach uh, and and and. But wait a minute, but I can talk, oh, is this an acquisition? Yeah, I would, I would throw that in as an acquisition. Okay, so yeah. we're going to wait. We're going to wait after that discussion. <laughs> so I wanted to welcome to the group those of you who introduced yourself, which was Claire, um, Claire McAvoy on Ra Ravelry. She also has a podcast, which is NH Knits, which I spoke about in my last episode. So thank you so much for joining the group, Claire, and it was great to hear your latest episode about Rhinebeck. I was exceptionally jealous and envious, but happy for you nonetheless. And those of you can, um, who haven't checked out this podcast, I would highly recommend it. It's a nice auditory podcast. I also wanted to welcome Salmonitz from Brooklyn, New York. They're um, looking to relocate to Maine. They're coming up in January to try it out. And so if you do find yourself up in this neck of the woods, please look me up. Be happy to host you in January in Maine on the ice, ice fishing the whole main experience so you can really sink into that and see if it really suits you so um, so good luck with that adventure and we hope that you make it to our state and then MK Main Knitter who is Jen was at the retreat um, and she is um, she came to the retreat last year she's a fellow Mainer and she also went home with one of my fleeces so good luck with that she did say that she wants to learn more about wool and she's certainly endeavoring as she took home my three and a half, four pound raw Icelandic fleece. Good luck with that. Yes. Immersion. <laughs> it is immersion. Um, what else? I think that's it. All right. All right. So we're going to go right to work some Press progress. On. I had a, a <clears throat> finished objects. I had a fantasy of watching It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown tonight. So we'll see how far we get. Yeah. So try not to fill this up with too much foo-foo chatter. Um, I, you are all going to be so surprised about this. So I have decided that the stocking is off the knitting roster. So I put it in finished objects because technically in my heart, it's finished. It's finished. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the real boon for me came when I sent a sweater off to my nephew and I didn't really receive any feedback about it. So, I feel like, okay, you know, not as serious about the knitwear, and therefore the stocking may not be as important as I had perceived it to be, and therefore I'll be putting it off till next year. <clears throat> Potentially. Potentially. Because your mom and I 
were talking about how our childhood stockings were felted. Yes. And I, mine was a felted stocking with a felted, a lot like the Christmas ornaments that you make, mm. with a felted Santa on a felted sleigh, and they were stuffed and sewn on and hand sewn sequins and hand embroidered, and I still have it and I still love it, and your mom's was the same, she still has hers. And so that might be something fun because it would be a break from knitting and it wouldn't be, you wouldn't feel like I'm knitting, but I'm, I don't like what I'm knitting. Like I could almost make him a proxy stocking until the knit one was done. Right. Plus it would be something different. Like the alias stocking. The placeholder. The placeholder <laughs> stocking. So I wanted to let everybody know that that is off. Done. Done. I'm done not going to touch that. I'm not going to worry about having it done for the holiday, um, and I don't think that the boy will be, the littler boy, not my boy, will be scarred for life, will not be traumatic. So that's gone. So other than that, and then I have no finished objects. I have one finished object, my gargantuan <laughs> that's gargantuan. bed bag. Am I taking it off? No. Not leave it on? Can, but show them the pin. Oh, I... Uh, Yep, I Told finished you. my bed back, and did we talk about how I loved it so much and just kept knitting it? So I loved knitting the bed back so much that I did two extra increases. Not planned. It was un no, un unplanned, increases. unplanned increases. I was just cruising along, and um, when I got to the end, I was counting my stitches. <laughs> I was like, holy smokes. I was, it was a lot of stitches. It was a lot, Where especially when you like in... increased for the arrowheads. It was like, it was seven, insane. I had like yeah. 700 stitches. Yeah. Needless to say, those last five rows. Oh, anyways, ran out of yarn. It was a debacle. Ran out of yarn. Had so, to order more. had to order more. And if I'm ordering from the Island Wool Company, you know, for one skein of Schnellden, I might as well. You might as well order more. Order more. So we did. So we did. That's what we did. Which leads us into whips. Which leads us right into whips. And I'm going to show my pin during acquisition. Yeah. Maybe. We have a lot. Yeah. Upstairs. So do you want to go first? Or should I go first? Well, I'll have you go first because we ordered, we had to order more yarn. And so in doing that, I wanted, didn't bring one we didn't want to pay shipping for one skein of yarn. So we were like, in for a penny, in for a pound, let's just bring it all over. That's right. And so what did you end up so, acquiring yarn for? So I acquired yarn for the Vasilisimits that I think the last time I was on we were talking about yes. knitting. And I think I have my pattern that I think I can show. Um, but I acquired the pattern because Renee Michelle gifted it to me. From Texas. After the last podcast so nice. she gifted it to me i don't have the pattern With, it, it's kind of like an incentive for morgan to check ravelry it's like highly yes. rewarded like pavlov's dog um try not to show any of the charts so full cool. yeah nice nicely this done. one yeah i told you the couch was, i can't see that there they yeah, are there they are so these are the pants <laughs> you don't have to do it that way why why are you doing that one? This, oh, that's the hand. This Got is it. the hand. This is the palm. These are the same mittens. Um, and I love them. They got trees on them. So, <laughs> why are you laughing at me? This, I meant to say, you I'm know, like, what's this? This is the... So, um, I am knitting it in the um, leftover driftwood from my Vedbeck. Which we think, by the way, is actually pronounced Wedbeck, because I feel like these in the Germanic languages, I know somebody's going to correct me on this, are pronounced W, and the W's are pronounced V, like Vomaisa. Right. And that's totally fine. So, I am going to call it Wedbeck. we continue to call it Wedbeck. <laughs> if you can tell us linguistically how we should be, but we feel like in my heart, it's I'm going to call it a bit better. Yeah, it, has, it carries a little bit it's more. It's stronger for yeah. me. Anyway, so the Schnellden. Yep. And Which we, I think, are pronouncing completely incorrect as well. Schnellden. There's the double dots over the A and the E. No, the Schnellden. A and the E are melded together. and Isn't that linguistic, a phonetic? A I don't think. Anyways. I don't know if it's that. The driftwood 
is what the cream would be, and then the trees and the dolls are in turf by um, Animal Company as well. And so this is what I have. This was also, it's hard to see the dolls. Are they coming in? Um, there they are. Fur is angry. So rocks outside. So there are the dolls. I'm just starting the trees. So this is the cuff. Um, this was also quite a debacle. I am not on a roll, let's say that much. Well, I guess I am so much on a roll. You were so much on I'm a roll. I'm so much on a roll that I, I rolled right rolled over Rolled right, right over, <laughs> rolled right over this, so until I ran out of yarn. And when I ran out of yarn, by the way, I only had five rows left. I was already halfway oh, through the arrow. Yeah, when you, yeah. Yeah, and so this, I was knitting along and I had gotten done one whole set of trees, so it was probably about this tall. Wow. And um, I was showing them to someone, and they said, wow, those look so nice. Where do your thumbs go? And I realized I had skipped the gusset. Didn't skip it, just didn't Just read. didn't do it. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, Fern, that's enough. So sorry. I didn't read with the Whitney cardigan. I didn't read with this... So anyways, I had to rip out 26 rows and start over, but I'm happy to say, there it is. So you're knitting those on size? One. Cubics. Cubics, size one. Which is what millimeter? I can tell you. We're a little sloppy tonight, folks. Sorry. Lots to get through, and I didn't have much planning time. Um, that's two and a quarter millimeters on the size one, mm -hmm. snarled in yarn, which is a four-ply um, UK determination and in the states it would be a, a fingering equivalent fern that is enough so so that is that that is what i'm working on for for th that yarn and then sarah gave me um this we're calling it mallard duck head that's what you're calling that's it. what i'm calling it it didn't have a collar on the tag no it didn't so mallard duck head um, English Lister Long wall. Also known as teal. Well, it's just got, it's, it's got a lot just, of play. Yeah. In the light. Yeah, it does. Um, and so I am knitting, I'm in the middle of a row, so that's unfortunate, but I am knitting the Arrowhead shawl. I forget. Oh, that looks good. Can you see that? Yeah. So I am knitting the Arrowhead shawl. Um, which pattern I don't have, but I'll look that up and show you guys. Is that by Pam Allen? Um, oh, I got it. It's in a magazine, so it's going to take me a while to find it. Yeah, I can't remember if it's by Pam Powers or Pam Allen. Um, I'll look it up and we'll, we'll while you're doing your stuff, and I'll tell you okay. at the end. Okay. Um, but I'm knitting the Arrowhead shawl. It's um, lacy. It is. It's and Morgan's first lace. More, my first real lace. Um, and adventure and I really like it I had to I was knitting on metal needles and I just got cubics circular needles and I'm much happier because the yarn was just I was gripping it so hard because it was slipping off the metal just the type of and yarn was just pray tell us about the yarn why would it be so slippery because it is has it a lot of luster, luster. Cause it is a because it is a long wool of the Lester. Of the Lester. Breed. Breed. Forsooth. <laughs> Pray tell. Pray tell. <clears throat> so, um, I just switched to, it was it was rough going there for a while. I got that at Maryland Sheep and Wool. I'm yeah. very, I'm loving it. I love the color. I can't wait for it to be done. I can't wait to and wear it And I think around. it's kind of a heavy spore or DK weight. I don't know. Hard telling, not knowing. Hard telling, not knowing. There she is. So that is what I'm currently working on. Oh, yeah, and that'll be that'll be in acquisitions as well. Um, so that is all that I'm working on right now because my Whitney cardigan. Oh no, not the not the, not the Sullivan made. cardigan by Whitney Crick. There's some. Yeah. Um, I haven't worked on it all. I'm saving it for when it gets really cold and. I can't leave my house because the snow is so deep. 
Which and everything on Sunday. And everything else <laughs> is finished. We're supposed to get eight inches of snow on Sunday. Yeah. So who knows? But when it's when it's done, I know it'll be happy when it's done. But I'm just loving all the other things that I'm knitting, and I also have been doing some spinning. And so don't talk about the spinning yet. I won't talk about that yet, says Sarah. Sorry, my voice just cracked. Okay, that's it's all. my turn. Your turn. So luckily Morgan had some color for you because many of you know that I um, recently cast on a couple projects having finished my bed back and my Burnham Wood Capelet by Romy Hill. The bed back is by um, Carrie Westerman or Karina Westerman. She has a blog, fourthedition.co.uk. And I finished the sweater, The Good No by Bonnie Sennett. So I had all these things coming off the needle. So what did I cast on? I cast on two gray projects. But I will be rectifying all of this once one of them is done. So don't despair <laughs> with the whips. Um, I cast on for working on campus. Some of you may know that I went back to university this um, year full time in the speech uh, language pathology program. And I have two classes that I can knit in. And also, I can knit while I'm walking across campus or waiting in line for lunch. Um, sometimes I get lunch on Thursdays. <clears throat> and so I've cast on, scooch it, scooch it. Oh, sorry, it's okay. I've cast on the Waffle Creams by Ann Hansen. And these are socks. And you can see, I'll just see if I can spread that texture out a little bit for you. Um, they have a twisted cable rib and then a kind of a split um, ribbing. And this is the second time I've knit them. Uh, I knit them for my mom uh, last year uh, out of Madeline Tosh, super wash for her. But this is out of the Serenity Farms Gratois uh, base, which is <laughs> Coria <Sorry. laughs> uh, Dale with a, with a splash of alpaca, as Granny Sheep would say. I love them. Such that. I love them as well. The, Those are substantial. Yeah, and the the split, the the textured rib <clears throat> and the cable just give it a lot of structure and um, stretch so that I want these to fit snug. I'm knitting them on a size 2 US Cubics, which is a 2 and 3 quarter millimeter, and I have, I think it's 64 stitches. I'm not a big sock knitter. I mean, I enjoy knitting socks and I can knit socks, but I'm not like, I don't have a pair of socks on the go all the time. So a lot of people who have this magic number and they have this recipe and this formula, um, that's not something that's intuitive for me. So I will follow this pattern to a T. Obviously they're knit from the top down and I cannot wait to have them. So this is a lot of uh, in-class work that's happening. So. It's in my um, homemade bag, and Granny Sheep was kind enough to send me another skein of the Gratois so that I can actually have a pair of socks. It was exceptionally generous of her, but um, ex very much appreciated um, for my love of gray. Next, I am working on, and this is a very exciting element, I am having coordinated the Highlands of the Fly Retreat with Fiberista Files or Butcher's Babe or Heather. Um, we had hosted a retreat in Maine last weekend at the New England Outdoor Center and I had asked Bristol Ivy, the designer, to come and speak. She's a Maine designer. She works for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, she has designs published in a number of different venues including Twist Collective, which is where this is uh, from. This is the Delius Best. This is Hatchtown Coopworth, which is a local Maine farm. You can see the definition there quite well. And Pam vended at the retreat last year. She was at Rhinebeck this year. She has a prize-winning flock of Coop, uh, prize-winning flock of Coopworth, and has some gorgeous hand-spinning fleeces. Her yarns are outstanding and a treat to work with. This is my second project I've done with Coopworth, and I have. 12 ounces upstairs waiting to be spun that I purchased at last year's retreat. This I purchased at the Fiber Frolic uh, a, year and a, a year ago, and it is being knit up for the boy. It has the two front panel cables, 
with the rib and then one cable going up the center back. So Bristol Ivy was quite um, gracious so I get to sit and knit with her for a little while. I did have a bit of a fangirl moment, but I can let that go. I got my picture taken, she signed my pattern. So I don't usually get goofy around things, you know, that kind of thing, but I was a little bit, I was a little, I just was, I don't know, impressed. People work hard, they offer gorgeous work, and I feel like they should be um, acknowledged well, I mean, for that. It's not like you ran into her at the mall. You were no. at a knitting retreat. Right. So if there's ever a time and a place, that was both the time and the place. <laughs> um, she did a wonderful talk for us about um, design, and um, I think the participants at the retreat very much enjoyed it. So anyway, this is, I'm just about to split for the um, front and the back. And it'll split again. It's a, um, it has, I don't know, I think this doesn't show up as well as I like. It has a split front. We'll see how it does. I love how we're like, oh my god, we're like <laughs> trying to get up. So you can see that. And there's Bristol Ivy's hand, John Hancock. So, yeah. So that's what I'm working on. I know. Gray. But don't, like I said, don't despair, because when we get into acquisitions and discoveries, you'll see that I really went outside. She did. She surprised me. Went out on a limb. Yeah. Like, we'll have to talk about gradients, because... Holy smokes. I know. So here's the little arrowhead shawl by Pam Allen. Pam Allen, who is a uh, Pam Allen of Quinton Company, I think. Shoot! Why? I just had it. Hold, hold on, folks. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. So there it is. Yep. Little arrowhead shawl. So I think yeah. that's going to be really nice. We wanted something kind of drapey, show off the yarn. Yeah. Yeah. So that is what Sarah picked it out and sent it to me and said, what about this? And I said, yes, please. So. So that's what we're working on for whips. It's not exceptionally exciting as other podcasters. I'm excited for my mittens. Yeah, you actually, you have more exciting projects than I do. My mittens that will be done before, not before the snow falls, but no, because no, that's, that's going to okay. be on Saturday. Um, and I really want to get that vest off the needle, so I'm being pretty monogamous in the evenings to that. I will say, I'm knitting that on size 9 US, which is 5.5 millimeters, on Knitter's Pride Dreams and Interchangeables. And I will say that knitting on the larger needles can be a little bit hard on my hands. So mm. I have to, you know, after two and a half hours, sometimes I have to just let that go. Um, so. Acquisitions? Acquisition. No, spinning. Spinning! I've been spinning, everyone. It's going crazy. <clears throat> so I started with the... With the um, fiber that the woman who I purchased the uh, wheel from gave me. And we didn't know what it was. Sarah thinks it's probably merino. It's pretty luxurious. Yeah. And soft I was struggling and short for a minute staple. with that. Short staple. And so then I had some, it was white, white merino. And then I had white Romney that a woman in our knitting group had graciously given me when yep. I was working on the drop spindle. So I spun that up, and then I finished the merino after I had kind of gotten the hang of the Romney. And then I went, and a um, woman that I met was kind enough to share some white alpaca with me. Mm -hmm. And so everything was white, so that was great. So I spun that, and I have the last of that that um, I have spun. So now I have four bobbins full of what is a white um, colorway. Colorway, what's the word I'm looking for? Genre. G genre, is it? I'm looking for a, a um, what's a, when a bunch of stuff is together? What is that? Conglomerate? <laughs> That's a little bit fancier than the word I was looking for, but. Amalgamation? <laughs> That's way <laughs> fancier. <laughs> um, an assortment. Fair enough. That's an assortment good. of, of, um, well, that is all of the of a white colorway. Um, and okay. so this is what the white last... is really hard. It uh, is. Well, I'll show the gray then. So I finished the white, and Sarah 
gave me some of her gray Icelandic from her sheep, Sassy. Sassy, who's coming back to, to our farm. And um, this, I just started knitting this last night. And there spinning it is. It. Sorry, <laughs> spinning. I'm spinning now. <laughs> um, and so that is that. You can see that. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. I'm getting the hang of it. Yeah, um, um, which is good because when you see acquisitions and discoveries. Right. And <laughs> after after um, this, I'm also going to spin the Country Girl at Heart. From Fondant Fiber. That was given to us, gifted. That was sent by Fondant Fiber, which was very generous of her. I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to it. But I wanted to get a lot of practice in before I ventured into that. Um, so I'm excited for that. And we'll talk about the rest in acquisition. So is it me? I think it's you. All right. So I finished washing my Lester Longwell. And I did two different types. I washed a set. I washed six ounces of locks of the fleece in the lock and then the rest I washed in the washing machine and I've given some of that to a friend portion of that to a friend so what I'm working on right now is preparing the locks for spinning the, the preserved locks and so I did a set of comb I, I combed a set of them and those of you may have seen some of this already it's, a, it's just absolutely stunning <clears throat> to prepare this, I did staple the lengths and I sorted it by colors, the darker grays, the chocolate, um, it was chocolate brown, darker grays, and charcoals. But, um, can't really see the luster on that. I think you can. <laughs> yeah, so here's one of the nests that I've done. <clears throat> but what I found is that, in fact, um, here's how they came washed. They came out. You can see that's a really nice long staple length. And so what I was doing is I would take this dog grooming machine, um, machine, <laughs> brush, <laughs> and I would flick out the ends just to separate out the um, tips because I was finding that there was a lot of waste. <clears throat> and then I would put the butt ends into the comb. And again, I was still coming up with a lot of waste. So I experimented a little bit with just taking the ends and flicking those out too with my dog grooming machine <laughs> brush and I'm thinking what I'm going to be able to do I know this isn't I'm not about technique this is a learning curve for me so I may not be flicking these the way you should be doing it but I'm happy with the results as I as I learn so when I flick that out, you can see that, in fact, I end up with something that is completely spinnable. And so what I've been doing is spinning right from the lock instead of losing some of that waste to the combs. I have found that combing this is difficult because the movement is so um, exaggerated because the locks are so long. And so sometimes I found that this would get tangled or I wouldn't catch it right. And it was kind of a bummer to lose a massive portion of the, um, the fiber that's already preserved in its structure in the, in the combing. So, like I said, I'm just going to spin from these locks. I can kind of pull these out a little bit and, um, and make, and I'd probably go from the tip end in and make my own nest this way. You can just see it just kind of pulls right out evenly. Um, those of you may remember that I won the Instagram contest for um, Boston Jen, the fall shawl style, and I won Helen Stewart's, uh, a choice of Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade of her shawls. And I picked um, the one she designed she had, like, for the beach pebble or something the like that. pebble beach shawl beach. I think and I'm gonna try and spin kind of a fingering weight uh, to do that shawl in this Lester Longwall so this is my little set of locks to flick I did finish spinning or, or plying some of the Coriadale Shetland I've been working on, and I have my plying head on my wheel, which is why I haven't been spinning, which is totally not an excuse. But 
I'm going to finish plying that hopefully this weekend and put my spinning maidenhead back on or it's, yeah the spinning head back on so I can get working on spinning so and the locks will be right on that acquisitions and discoveries mm. hold on to your hats I went to a knitting retreat <laughs> who where do you want to start um, can I, let's get these things, let's do these things first. Yes, do those. Okay. <clears throat> so, it's been a while, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it has been. Um, Granny Sheep sent a package to Sarah and, um, included something for me in it and I have not had the opportunity to thank her and show you what she sent me. Um, so she sent me these half mitts, which is very exciting because now I can knit outside and in my house because, you know, no heat till trick or treat. Um, yeah. That's pretty <laughs> clever. <laughs> um, so I've been keeping it at 60. Um, but these, it was so nice of her to send these, um, the colorway of the striping is called Boxes and Grapes, and she said that she thought it seemed appropriate for me, which is great, and as I was snacking on grapes last night, um, <laughs> I was like, ooh, how appropriate, yeah. Boxes and Grapes on my hands, wish I had Foxes and Grapes in my yard, but, but you just, know, just the grapes, just the grapes. um, but anyways, I just wanted to say thank you, Granny Sheep, for sending these my way. That was extremely thoughtful, and I really appreciate it. And I'm and wearing them and loving them, and my mom saw them and said, uh, excuse me, where did you get those and where are mine? So something I can make my mom now. Very exciting. So thank you. Um, and what else was I going to say? I wrote something down. Any Granny Sheep, and you already talked about the pattern. Yep. And um, I think that's it for that. Yeah, I think that's it for that. So, oh, I wanted to talk about the other color that I got the I got um, charcoal, which is the same color way I did my bed back. Right. So this is the other um, snail and Island Wool Company yarn that I got when I ran out for my vet bag. So uh, this was going to be the background color in the Vesalisa mittens with the charcoal, but I decided it was too, with the green, it was just too harsh um, for me personally. And so I decided to go with the driftwood. And I'm happy I made that decision. I really <coughs> like it. So, But I'm going to use this for something else, and I'm really looking forward to whatever that something else is. <laughs> Um, so another acquisition that I have is my, I was wearing my Rivington Cowlette by Kristen Kapoor, by Kristen Kapoor, and, um, my supervisor, I went into work one day and she is knitting a sweater that she has been knitting for quite some time and she's knitting it with peace fleece. And she's struggling. Um, I think it was just a big project for her to take on and maybe, she should be knitting something quicker that she can look at and say, I knit that and I finished it and I can finish the sweater too. And so she looked at um, the cowlette that I was wearing and loved it and she was like, you know, I think I could knit that. And I said, of, of course you can knit this because I, when, I first, when I knit it, I didn't do the lace border. I just have... Right, the, there's a heavy lace, there's like a thick lace border and then like a... <clears throat> like a graphic lace border, and then there's this kind of mesh yarn, part. yarn over knit two together part. Yeah. Um, and so I texted Sarah, and I was like, oh, Jean wants to knit the Rivington. What yarn should we look at? And um, she told us to look at 13 Mile. Um, mm -hmm. And so we looked at colors, and she found out that it was plant-dyed and predator-friendly, and she was loving that. Um, she is a um, botanist and naturalist and loves to garden and loves all things natural world so she was absolutely loving it and 
she decided we needed a natural color and we needed a dyed color. And so we were looking online and she really couldn't make up her mind. We went on Ravelry and looked at knitwear that people had knit with these colors. And I said, okay, you know what? Um, you should get... Two Morgan <laughs> really takes one for the team here. <laughs> I said, you get... If you can't decide between two natural colors and two dyed colors, then you should get all four and I'll pay for half and I will take whatever you don't want once it comes in the mail. <laughs> that was so good Generous of you. Of I know. I know. I'm such a big person. <laughs> so um, I ended up with the light heather gray and the choke cherry. So I'm really excited. I have no idea what I'm going to knit with these two yet, but I'm loving it. I'm just glad that I have it in my possession. And um, Jean ended up getting the Alpine Lake and the Latte colorway. So that was good. I love those colors as well. And I think that if I'm going to buy more yarn, which I think I definitely am, I don't think I know. Um, but I'm going to get the Alpine Lake and the Latte too. I just love those colors together. Her colors are spectacular. Yeah, I'm loving them all. Um, so that is that. I also am going to be knitting the Rivington cowlet for my grandmother for Christmas and I am knitting um, it for her with Cascade 220 fingering and I don't think these have colorways on there. I think they're just numbers. Yeah, it's just numbers. But it's kind of like this Azulian what's the color? What's the color I'm thinking of? <laughs> Lapis, Lapis Lazuli. Lazuli. Yeah. Is that what this is? Lapis Lazuli, yeah. Yeah, kind of this, it's... It's, a, it's, it's like the color of Morgan's shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then this... <laughs> and then this light gray. Um, so this is the natural color. Oh, that's pretty. I yeah. haven't seen those yet. No, you haven't. Um, I also... Jimmy. Yeah, I also got these two colors. I didn't know you got those either. Um, well, you know, this was another can't decide, let's get all four and pick later. <laughs> type yeah. of thing. That's the thing about knitting for other people when they're not with you to help you pick out the colors. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, I wasn't 100% sure, so I bought all four and my mom came and picked the blue and the gray. And so now I have these two and maybe I'll end up knitting two of them and giving one for her for her birthday so she can wear them with different outfits. She's very stylish that way. Um, <laughs> so that is those acquisitions. And then, um, should I share what I got in my, in my goodie bag? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. We're um, going to talk about goodie bags potentially another time. Okay. We'll I got to check that. in with my barista files. Okay. Um, so then I was spinning like a mad woman. And I was over here at Sarah's, and we were getting ready for the retreat, retreat. and there was a coupon code. Code. <laughs> a coupon code. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> there was a coupon code for Three Waters Farm. Which we love. And I went online, and I called my mom, and I was like, hey, I have a coupon code. My Mimi, my grandmother. She doesn't, um, she can't really get out and go shopping anymore, but she's not a gift certificate kind of person. She likes to get you a gift that you're going to use that you want. And so, um, I was like, what if I purchased this with my coupon code and Mimi gave it to me for Christmas? Um, so I did. And I got, <laughs> I got, um, what was the color of this? I don't think they have colors. Green. A green dimension. And it's Polworth, Mohair, and Silk. Yep. Tessa Silk. Tessa Silk. And there it is. Green Dimension. I'm super excited. I love it. I love it. We picked it out online and we both liked the same one. Yep. So I got this one and then I also... Watch out for the dog hair. The dog hair everywhere. I also got, this is called Spring Green. And this is Gray Shetland. Overdyed gray. Overdyed gray. Um, and I love this. I love that too. A lot. A, a lot, lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. A lot. Um, so I ordered those and they came in the mail. And um, they came in the mail yesterday. Just in time. But uh, something else I ordered also at Sarah's house. 
horrific influence, Sarah. The enabler. Because um, I can't order anything. And this is an acquisition for the both of us, and I actually need yes. you to show yours because I have this place mine. So, Emily of Fibertown will appreciate this purchase. And for those of you who watched my last episode in the sexy, druidic, earthen, elven <laughs> descriptor, come pick me, Peter Jackson kind of way, <laughs> um, we got these. <laughs> so, so stupid. Um, we got these little penannulars. And they are tiny. Yeah, and the little triangles are blue. Yep. And then we got this one, which is a little bit more kind of Roman inspired. Mm. And we each got one of those. Yep. And then I got two of the bigger ones, um, one for my vet back. Um, and I have an extra one that I can use on another shawl. And so that came in the mail on Monday. It's been an exciting week exciting. at the post office, let me tell you something. Yeah. And um, I picked up a ton of packages at the post office too, and they must they're like, is this more knitting? I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes. it is. <laughs> um and so And it just keeps going. It just keeps going <laughs> because so today I showed up at Sarah's house. I wasn't able to go to the retreat. No, she helped pack all the goodie bags. Yeah, I had a work conference that I had to attend at actually um, Sarah's old stomping grounds. Where I used to live. Where Sarah used to live. Yep. Um, Ironic. So I was there all weekend, and I wasn't able to make it to the retreat, which was unfortunate. But so Sarah bought me some gifts. I did. Which was so nice. And I'll start with this. Where it is. Okay. This is from Highland Handmaids. So this is from Highland Handmaids. Heather of the Fiberista Files podcast. This is two <laughs> ounces of Romney. There we go. I also got two ounces of Romney. Yeah. Or matchy matchy. Or matchy matchy. <clears throat> so that's Button's main Romney. Extremely beautiful. I'm so excited. I have all this stuff to spin it's with thin. and all this stuff to knit with. And so then she also got me um, from One Loop and Fiber Arts a conglomerate. <laughs> An amalgamation. <laughs> An assortment <laughs> of um, different types of fiber. And this says Alpaca, BFL, Merino, Romney, and Shetland. And Navajo Churro, Corydale, and Gotland. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the Navajo churro is from Maine. There is a flock of Navajo churro in this state. I bought yarn from that flock last year, and I think this is one of the fleeces from this year. So this is great because this is going to allow me to kind of experiment with all these different types of um, wool. Yeah. So I'm really perfect looking forward pack. to it. The perfect sampler pack for any beginner spinner. <laughs> All right, Smarty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then um, she also got me some natural dyed yarn from Upton Yarns, yep. Sarah Lake. Yep, my friend Sarah Lake. And this is called Tiger Lily, I believe. Yep. And do we know what it does say, but I don't actually know what it this means. This is Matter and Weld. What does that mean? Do you know? So Matter um, will give you a variation of those reds it comes from the root and mm -hmm. then weld is a plant that will get is, is capable of giving you blue i believe so this is matter i think and maybe dipped in weld or vice versa so very cool her, her yarns were pretty crazy beautiful so this is called tiger lily but it's kind of it's like pumpkin spicy is what yeah. sarah is what you were describing it yeah. as you sarah not this sarah Yes, me. Yeah. yeah, me. Not the other one. So, and this is to knit my first pair of socks, which I haven't picked out the pattern for. Um, but I'm really excited. And it's a three ply Coopworth from yeah. um, Buckwheat Blossom Farm. It's the same uh, family who uh, comes and shears my sheep. So it's their Coopworth. And Sarah procures the fleeces and she turns it into her custom yarns. And. Uh, and it's a really just amazing product. That's it for you. 
I think that's it for me. So I went to the retreat too and <laughs> spent a lot of time with Sarah, um, <clears throat> which you'll see. <laughs> So I wasn't going to do my all my purchases, but I haven't really been in the market for yarn lately. So she had a gorgeous display of gradients um, of her yarn kind of in a gradient type way. So let me get these flipped around so that the tags aren't. So all of these are varying indigo, walnut, and natural. So there's walnut dyed indigo dyed and then a series and then a natural and I'm planning to knit another Carrie Westerman or create a Westerman shawl called Hoxon which I know uh, Happy Debs or UK Debris, Debris UK Debris um, Ravelry she's a member of our group she also came to the retreat she's planning to knit this too and that poor little colonial blue right here is getting blown out but that's the gradient that we picked out. Uh, Jody of One Loop and helped us do that. And they are just stunning. This is, um, these are all a three ply Cotswold Romney. Um, and then this one has a little bit more Romney. She calls this her silver. Um, no, nope, three ply Cotswold Romney fingering weight. She has one that she calls a, she has a silver, silver, um, silver base but this um, I think is the same content makeup so they're gorgeous and I love them so they're gonna be a shawl I also bought for the Orion's belt shawl by Paulina P on Rav um, I bought some of the tiger lily too I know you're amazed and I bought so we'll do this so Orion's Belt has um, a series of knot works around the crescent, so it's a, it's a crescent shawl, and then there's a little series of knot works in color, contrasting color. So this is going to be the base of the shawl, this is gorgeous cranberry, and that's going to be the knot work. So something very outside my box. Very. And the red is a uh, full matter, and that's a pretty well done representation of the red. So, my husband, I brought home. This is a three ply Coopworth, um, as I said before, from Buckwheat Blossom, and I brought him home this indigo weld color, and he'll be knitting socks out of this. So, three ply Coopworth. From Buckwheat Blossom, Upton Yarns, dyed 50 grams, 110 yards, the colorway U from the summer of 2013. So, really special yarn from the state. I also brought home, which is the one skein that Jody of One Lupin brought for me. There was one skein of this, which is gray. It doesn't look too gray there. It's getting blown out. I'm sorry for that. Merino, 80% Merino, 20% to silk for this one. And then I picked up this to go with it in some fashion or another. And this is 50% Merino, 25% Yak, 25% silk. It's a two-ply fingering. This is a two-ply lace weight, 400 yards, 400 yards, three and a half ounces, four ounces. So I think they'll work okay together. I'll make that happen. So this one's definitely a little bit lighter than this, but I think I can make that work. This colorway is fig. So I also brought home a sampler pack for myself to spin. Put that with the fondant fiber pack that Deb sent me from Britain. I know. How could I walk away without these natural um, fleeces? And I also had a very generous... A um, couple of gifts. One is sitting behind me, and I'll have to have Morgan reach it. So, <laughs> there was kind of an intervention that happened at this retreat with um, Deb from the UK and Chrissy from the Stitch Together podcast. And I had mentioned before on the podcast how in love I was with Blacker Yarn and been stocking Blacker Yarn, but just hadn't made the investment to pay the shipping and order 
the yarn that I want because I figure if I'm going to pay the shipping, I'm going to get all the yarns that I want and it's a fair amount of an investment. So these uh, lovely ladies uh, brought something special across the sea for me. Um, this is blacker. It's over dyed gray and a beautiful lavender. This is Manx wool with mohair. I love that color. She's in England. She has a line, a number of lines of uh, breed specific yarns and conservation breeds. She also has um, blacker swan yarns and that's a Falkland wool. Absolutely gorgeous. This was the intervention. <laughs> Which ironically enough, I mean, uncanny that I brought this home too. So they were very inspiring, obviously. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Stitch Together, Chrissy and Happy Debs, because this is such a special gift. And um, Deb even made this uh, project bag and sent it and brought it along. So that was absolutely unexpected and again, very much appreciated. And then the last thing that came my way from a fairy godmother came from Sweden. I know, she gave this to me and I was like holding it like a child all weekend, my baby. <laughs> this is, and I can tell you more about it when I start to spin it. This is Swedish fine wool in the most gorgeous colorway. Mm -hmm. And she brought this uh, with her from her travels. She came to the retreat from Sweden. And... Wow, that's a child. What a spectacular gift. So it has only remained this much open because I don't want to open it yet and expose it to the ills of the dog hair in the house. So, um, but as this um, becomes part of my spinning basket, I will happily give you more information about it. And she's going to share more information about it too because this is some sort of Swedish abbreviation that we don't know. So um, anyway, really awesome and really special. So I did make out like a bit of a bandit after a pretty substantial yarn famine. Mm. It's kind of a feast at this moment. Yeah. So, Ooh. man, I think we're done. Wool pigs. Yeah. But you know what? I'm totally psyched to own that. You should be. Wool pig and happy. Happy as a wool pig and wool. <laughs> That's an appropriate thing to say. <laughs> Could be so inappropriate. So, I don't have to talk about textiles and time. Yeah. Because Morgan's going to do Mega Fun a Minute. Yeah, well, you know, light on the Mega. <laughs> yeah, more on the Halloween. More on Where did we leave off? We've been having a lot of technical difficulty. Yes. And it is quarter to ten. Mm -hmm. So and we're going to cruise. We're going to cruise right through. Yeah. But should have, we have forgotten to mention something or overlooked something or we will come back to it. It is yeah. not done. It's just I had school all day. Morgan worked all day. So we and we, just, we wanted to get this organized because we're both here. Yes. So in the spirit of Halloween and the Great Pumpkin. Yes. Just fun a minute. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about that. Because I um, went to school with the gentleman who works for Maine Audubon, and um, my workplace likes Maine Audubon on Facebook, and I'm in charge of the Facebook page. And I was looking at everyone we like, and you know, just getting up to date and up to speed with um, all the information that's out there right now. And he posted an article about bats, and his article was saying, in the spirit of Halloween, you'll be seeing bats everywhere, on costumes, on pumpkins, on windows, but one of the places you may not be seeing them is in the sky. And I was like, perfect, I'm going to talk about this for Morgan's Megafauna Minute. We, we had originally talked about doing raccoons because... Well, we were going to talk about um, reindeer. We were going to, yes, and we and will then do that. I was going to talk about raccoons because Michelle of uh, Fiber Farm um, reached out to me on Ravelry and was asking about raccoon reproduction, <laughs> and I will be talking about that at some point um, on, on the podcast. Um, but I did want to talk about bats because there's a lot going on in the bat world, and... Um, I have friends in a lot of different agencies, actually, working with bats. 
I have a friend in IFNW working with Batch, which is main Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. And then I have a friend who's an environmental engineer working for the Department of Transportation, who's also working with Batch because um, a lot of the bridge replacements that are going on right now on I-95, they have to take um, bat populations into consideration when they're replacing those bridges. So we talk a lot about bats, so I figured, perfect. Let's dive in, take, shall we? Take it away. <laughs> Um, so in Maine, here in Maine, we have eight different species of bats, huh. and three of those species are called tree bats, and they are the bats that are going to migrate um, south for the winter right. and not overwinter in Maine. The other five species of bats that we have in Maine um, will stay and hibernate during the winter months, um, and the locations that they hibernate in are called hibernacula, and that's the plural. Hibernaculum is the singular. This is my hibernaculum, but I like, I have many hibernaculas. No, no S. Hibernacula. Hibernacula. All of the hibernacula. These are all of my hibernacula. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have many, you would have one. But I have one hibernaculum. <laughs> hibernaculum. <laughs> hibernaculum. Oh yes. Dear God. Um, so these hibernacula are typically abandoned mines or caves. Um, and occasionally bats are found in houses and I just did a program for some fourth graders in Millinocket and um, there was many, many shared bat in house stories. <laughs> Unfortunately, most of them ended with dead bats, which was really sad to hear yeah. and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so one reason you may not be seeing a lot of bats is because the weather is getting colder and if you're in an area where you have tree bat species they may be um, migrating um, but another reason you may not be seeing bats is because their numbers are actually dropping due to white nose syndrome and I'm sure most of you have that's in the United of, States yes the white nose syndrome is in the United States um, and it was first detected in 2006 um, in New York, um, and it, it is a disease that spreads in caves. Um, it has a very high mortality rate, um, and it's caused 5.7 million bats, um, estimated. 5.7 million bats have died from white nose syndrome in the United States since it was first detected in 2006, um, and that was in New York. In Maine, it was first confirmed in 2010, um, and it is suspected in the county that we live in, um, but it's been confirmed in two other counties in Maine. Um, as a result of this, and this is just in the state of Maine, three species um, are currently being proposed for listing under the Maine Endangered Species Act. Um, the two of these species, the little brown bat, which is a common bat, that w was probably um, maybe five or six years ago one of the most common bats that you would have seen would have been the little, uh, the little brown bat. The northern long-eared bat, um, those two bats are being proposed for the endangered species list, and the eastern small-footed bat is being proposed for the um, threatened um, list. So um, most species, this is just a fun fact, give birth to one pup, and they're called pups. Yep. Um, in May to July, and they're not able to fly for the first month. And so that's just kind of setting the scene for how delicate their reproductive um, stage is, because even though they're a small animal, and most of the time when you think the larger the animal, the smaller the number of offspring, and the smaller right. the animal, the larger the number of offspring. And so even though bats are small, they only give birth to one pup and that one pup is not able to fly for the first month, so it's left unable to defend itself. Oh, they leave them, they don't nurse them? No, they nurse for the first, for, um, they nurse, but they have to leave to get free right. because they're only parented by the females. Right. Um, and so it just leaves room for a lot of problems to occur yeah. because they're, they're not really able to defend themselves for a whole month. Um, if you have a bat in your house, you should check out Bat Conservation International for tips on how to handle that. And I guess they have a lot of tips on also if you want to have bats around your house, how to build bat houses um, for your yard and we have on your property. House. They're great. Yeah. Um, so 
I'm sure Sarah noticed because I noticed we had a really bad mosquito year this year. Yeah. It was awful. And a lot of that is due to our decreasing bat numbers. And it's unfortunate because with increased mosquito numbers, you also have increased mosquito borne illnesses. Um, we have West Nile, and we also have Tripoli, Tripoli. which is Eastern equine encephalitis, which causes brain swelling, um, which is unfortunate. But in my hometown, where I grew up in Southern Maine, um, we, do, we did have um, cases of Tripoli and um, it definitely affected the town because um, I know it, when I was in high school, a lot of after school activities had to happen before dusk because um, when the mosquitoes came out, they just didn't want to risk it because we did have a few horses die from Tripoli. Right. And so um, a one nursing brown bat, little brown bat, one nursing little brown bat can consume her body weight in flying insects every night, which is insane. Yeah, I mean, bats um, are... This includes mosquitoes, moths, beetles, and flies. And I think it comes out to just a, just about a thousand. Just about a thousand flying insects every night. Per bat, per night. Per bat, per nursing female bat. Right, per, per night. night. Yeah. Um, and just some of the uh, hot topics. I know that a lot of people are always worried about rabies and bats flying into your hair and giving you rabies. Um, less than one in 20,000 bats have rabies. rabies and bats aren't trying to eat your hair or bite you or get tangled up in your hair if you're from Maine. Um, we don't have a single bat in Maine that bites mm -hmm. and um, if they're flying near you it's probably because the insects are being drawn to your body heat and are trying to bite you and that's actually what the bats are trying to eat yeah, or the insects. Yeah, yeah. and um, any uh, happy news? Um, I love bats. It's a little bit. <laughs> I know it's really sad, it's but really sad. There's, you know, I feel like they're one of those species. This is like everybody hated, not everybody hated, but people were always scared of sharks, and then Shark Week came out, and now everybody. I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people still don't like sharks. Yeah, like my brother. Um, but now a lot of people find sharks fascinating and interesting, and there's a lot of money being dumped into shark conservation and shark finning is coming. You know, a lot of people are aware of it now, and, and I feel like bats just get a bad rep, and really they're doing us a favor by keeping the insect populations oh. down. And um, So if you have a bat in your house... Um, what was the website again? Bat Conservation? Bat Conservation International. Check them out. They have great tips on what to do if you have a bat in your house. Please don't kill it. Um, they need all the help they can get. Yeah, right now. Right now. At least in the United States. Yeah. So if you have seen a bat, that's excellent. I've only seen four bats this year. Yeah, I've seen two. And um, they were both big brown bats. I've seen no little brown bats. Yeah. Which was really sad. So I know that's sad, not a really good note, but it's Halloween and they're on the scene. <laughs> oh, bats, yeah. <laughs> and so I just wanted to, you know, let people know that... That they need our that help. That they need our help and... Um, it's just something to think about. Building a bat house if you have kids and you're looking for a craft yeah, one day. You can order them online. You can. Yeah. Kits, put them kits together. And the plans. Yep. So, so anyways, that's my. Thanks fauna. for the morbid Sorry, fauna minute. Morbid, morbid, <laughs> morbid, morbid, morbid fauna minute. Morgan's morbid fauna minute. Yeah. Um, we'll try to come back with a bit of gusto on our next one. Uh, that had just uh, piqued interest today because it had come out um, mm -hmm. and a new article. Be so. talking about raccoons. Yeah, we love raccoons here. Actually, there's I, there was somebody on the porch earlier, so. Mm -hmm. We're gonna wrap it up before we run into any more technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah. probably. So. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, goodbye. So, I'm just, yeah, I'm like wanting to apologize for our rather Mod hodgepodge. Hodge 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 h